Ryan Miller is a career services executive at Employment Boost, the leading boutique careers and outplacement services firm in the U.S. Employment Boost provides comprehensive outplacement services to some of the largest organizations in the country, spanning nearly all industries and sectors. At Employment Boost, Ryan manages customer success across both B2C and B2B accounts. Ryan is a graduate of Michigan State University, is a certified professional resume writer, and most importantly, perhaps, is a long-suffering fan of Detroit sports teams. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you, Kane. Happy to be here. Great. So we definitely wanted to have a conversation with you just to talk about outplacement. We're in what is one of the most attractive job markets for job seekers at the moment, but I think it, it's important to also think about the other side of the equation where in a world where we have rising rates, we've got geopolitical tension, um, what can companies do or what should companies be thinking of when you're thinking about layoffs? And so you're the expert in that space. Let's just start off with what what is outplacement? Sure. So outplacement services, they're career-related services like resume writing or career coaching uh, sponsored by an employer to an employee or a group of employees uh, whom are transitioning from the employer's organization. So that could be a firing, that could be a large-scale reduction in force. Uh, maybe a company gets acquired and there's the, the staff is no longer lean, so they need to reduce headcount and they have a, a layoff that way. Uh, so the services are designed to help the employee move into their next job as efficiently as possible. They have a resume writer, career coach helping them along the way so that they can make that move as seamless as it can be. Okay, great. And and that makes sense in an environment where, you know, the companies are, are, are not doing as well or, or the, the the markets aren't doing as well. So people have to do layoffs. Talk a little bit about trends, Ryan. What are you seeing right now in this kind of a job market? Are, are companies doing layoffs as a function of acquisitions? Are they doing layoffs because, you know, they're, they're shutting things down? What are you seeing? They are more of a sense of acquisitions. And then I would say, depending on the industry, they're more proactive to market trends. I know uh, with the rising of interest rates, there has been an increased industry for mortgage organizations that are out there that uh, maybe they're starting to get some of those economic headwinds and are trying to brace themselves. And so maybe have some kind of outplacement service in place in case they do need uh, to reduce the size of their force. Uh, but with the job market as is, we're at about 3.7, 3.8% unemployment or around there, which is where it was before the pandemic. Uh, we find that companies are really looking to add talent and candidates, we call it a candidate driven market where the supply of candidates and, and talent out there is not quite meeting the demand. And so for the standard job seeker, that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, but for companies that raises the question of keeping employees, treating employees well, just to make sure that they are able to add to their ranks and, and grow as businesses. Great. And, and that's a good segue into another question that I wanted to ask you. We did a, a video on the channel regarding the better.com layoffs. Um, but of course, that that made big waves when when the news came out that at least round one, when, when they did the layoffs and, and the CEO's actions, what, I mean, for, for somebody who doesn't know the industry that well, what did better.com do right? What did they do wrong? Sure. It, it's it's difficult for me, uh, admittedly, to think of what they did right uh, in the equation. So to, to give you, you know, to give the listeners some context, there were two layoffs uh, with better.com. One of them happened uh, near the end of last year, two weeks uh, before Christmas, which, you know, sounds badly enough, but I understand that end of the year and January, so December, January, are when the most layoffs happen. Um, so timing is is one thing. Uh, they laid off 900 employees then, and then most recently they laid off 3,000, so a larger scale uh, layoff as well. Uh, the situation in December is they laid off the 900 employees in a very uh, inhumane way. Uh, it was almost like a scene out of a movie when the employees who are primarily working remotely, they get a video conference from the CEO of the company who tells them that if you're on the video call, and this was about 15% of their total staff, that means that they're terminated immediately. Uh, they 
are no longer with the organization. I, I know previously before that call, the CEO had accused the employees on a larger scale of not being productive and stealing from time, stealing from clients, and that in the grand scheme of things, he accused them of only working two hours a day. And so there, there's already been some rumblings of discontent at the executive level. And so he drops this video. In the video, he mentions that the employees would be getting four weeks of severance pay, four weeks of, of benefits, and uh, about two months of healthcare premium coverage. But just the the coldness of it, and then you know the employees, their computers shut off, and, and it kind of came out of nowhere, is really what made the headlines back in December. Uh, and, and that sort of became the story for the second layoff that they had. It was more of a, I would describe it as a clerical or, or a technical error where 3,000 employees received a payment that was uh, labeled as a severance payment in their accounts. And that was how they found out about the layoff. They weren't actually personally approached by that. So that that's how it happened. And, and it became a very inhumane way, both occasions for, for those instances. Gotcha. And um, you touched on some of the tactics there on the downside, but in your experience, how could they have, how could they have improved that situation? I mean, layoffs are no fun in general. Well, you got to take a personalized approach and and really put yourself in the shoes of the, of the employee who's being affected by it. Uh, obviously 900 and 3000, those are very large number of employees and their reductions in force, but Maybe meeting with the employees individually, uh, you know, whether it's over Zoom or, uh, you know, just giving that individual attention between the employee and their HR representative, giving a game plan for what happens next, having that conversation with them instead of something that almost makes the employees seem like numbers, you know, and, and that, uh, you know, we're sending this video to you all. Everyone's circumstance is the same that's it. Here's, here's a month of pay and, and you're gone, you know? So uh, meeting with the employees individually. And, and when I mentioned a game plan for what happens next, a lot of times that does include outplacement services. So here's how we can help you land on your feet, uh, really give you the best chance at moving into a career so that your life isn't as impacted negatively as it could be, you know, because if you are getting a paycheck from an organization, you, you know, everyone's got bills to pay, everyone you know, has family, you know, most people have families, that path to the next job or the next role is something really valuable that an employer can offer uh, an employee who's going to be leaving the organization. So that's something they could have done to really kind of ease the, ease the blow. It's never an easy discussion, but you really want to have those kind of tools presented to the employees if you can. Yeah. Do you find in your experience that laid off individuals typically, uh, I guess the, the question is, which kind of service do they prefer? Do they prefer having access to somebody, you know, to talk through job tips or job, or do they prefer having kind of the tactical stuff around maybe resumes and stuff? Which is, which is the preference usually? I, I think that there's a need for both. The, the trend has gone more towards having a coach who can tell people where to look. Oftentimes the employees that do receive this kind of service have logged a very long tenure with the company, you know, 10, 20 years. And that's a long time to not be on the job market, to not know where the best places to look are. So I, I would say a hands-on approach to coaching. Of course, the resume matters. Um, but I, I, I would say that really making the most of your time and using the right resources, you know, online, potentially networking, uh, groups that they can join on LinkedIn, that kind of thing to where you give the person the most exposure to the job market, that guidance is invaluable to a job seeker, especially if it has been a very long time since they've looked for a new role. Sure. So outplacement, I mean, it sounds like something that most companies should have on deck or have in their back pocket for, for eventual layoffs. What are some of the frictions that you've seen other than cost, I'd say that, that companies would, uh, would make a company say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to forgo outplacement as part of my severance? So a lot of HR contacts do, they're a little bit timid as to the employee participation in the service. They may have an arrangement with an outplacement provider and say, hey, you know, we're going to arrange for this employee to receive three months of coaching or an updated LinkedIn profile or, you know, a resume service. 
and they hire us or, you know, hire another firm to do that. And they don't know how much the employee will, would be taking advantage of it. That's difficult because the employee would still be on the job market. They would still be unemployed uh, from a branding standpoint. If the employee is not participating actively in the search, you have to think, what is the employee saying about my organization that we, we just laid off? Uh, we're in the age of a, of, of, an, of an informed job seeker who Googles a company before they decide to apply to it. I know if you Google better.com right now, the first thing that pops up, you know, that Google auto populates is better.com layoffs, you know? So from a growth standpoint as an organization, better.com has to contend with that and say, this is the first thing people are going to read about us, the thing that's most searched about us. And I guarantee you that there have been people that didn't even know better.com as a company existed until this sort of scandalous story uh, came out. So uh, when employee, when in, former employees are sitting there, they're not really engaging in the job search. Maybe they uh, have been offered outplacement services and, and aren't really taking part in them. That's when they can kind of go off and maybe potentially take part in that uh, negativity regarding uh, a company's organization. So uh, keeping employees on task, motivated for the job search, that's really the best way for a company to protect themselves from that. I remember a statistic I saw years ago now, um, but it was something like a layoff as small as 1% can result in something like 30% of your company's workforce leaving the next year. I mean, have you seen that in your experience? Could you talk a little bit about what th- what that's like, survivorship stuff? A- absolutely, because y- you have to imagine morale. It's a very real thing. Uh, and workers today, especially now that for the most part, a lot of companies have gone fully remote. They are communicating with each other. Text messages go back and forth. Emails go back and forth. And you can, they, they talk to one another, you know, whether or not management knows it. And those conversations, you know, after layoffs are, are not going to be happy ones. You know, it's tough to carry on with business as usual when 3000 people have been laid off, when 900 people have been laid off. Uh, so, In a job market like this one, where there are options out there for potential employers and uh, you are at a company that has just laid off 15 or 20% of its workforce, uh, maybe that causes you to see what else is out there. Maybe you move to a more secure kind of of company, uh, especially if you know that if layoff happens, if layoff happens to you, you might not be helped <laughs> as yeah. much, you know? So, th- so that's the thing is you really, even though those employees are no longer going to be part of your organization, you really want to leave them with the best possible impression and give them all the tools they need to move forward in their career, even though they're no longer part of your team. Got it. Yeah. So, and you mentioned a lot of the digital, the, the informed job seeker, I think was a really interesting term that you use, but how can companies protect themselves from you know, what are probably eventual negative reviews or negative things on Glassdoor or whatever that the companies typically face? Great question. So layoffs happen to every company out there, whether it is a, a large scale economic downturn, or, or maybe it's, it's sort of that unique situation where one employee uh, no longer fits within the company's future plans. And so it, because layoffs happen to everyone, the, the best way that you can protect yourself from that potential negativity, potential bad press is to guide that employee into a new job uh, as efficiently as possible. Make sure that they're effectively compensated so that they don't have to stress even more after losing their job. Uh, you, you give them appropriate severance pay uh, and outplacement services to make that transition because when employees are left to fend on their own, that's when that negativity happens. And, and that's when sort of more the the bad press and maybe even instances of disparagement occur. So um, that that would be the the easiest way is to just make sure that the employee is taken care of and, and has a path of where to go next and, and quickly. What have been some of the hardest parts of of being in the space for you? Uh, you know, as, as someone you know, you've been in the outplacement space for many years. What's the hardest thing that you typically have to deal with in? either getting companies to sign on or getting individuals to start it, at least in, in the service. 
Sure. So I, I can answer that on, on two fronts. For, for the standpoint of getting companies to sign on to the service, it's really explaining the future value uh, of outplacement services. You know, yes, this employee's leaving your organization, but that actually impacts all of the employees that are still there. There's a morale aspect to it. You will be recruiting later. Uh, people do leave reviews online. Uh, people do talk within your industry and really stressing that digital brand nowadays is, is really the, the first thing that people look at when they're evaluating a company to, to join uh, as an employee or do business with. So, so for employers, I would say that's the toughest thing to convey is just that long-term future benefit. Uh, for the employees whom are signing on to the service and receiving it, it, it's it's a very emotionally charged time. So the difficult thing is is channeling those emotions, being a, a soundboard for the employee to where they feel supported and, and heard and have a lifeline because it is a very emotional, traumatic event is getting laid off from a job, especially if you don't expect it, uh, while still protecting the brand of the employer. Um, it, it's not so much that the employer doesn't care about them because obviously they do if they're providing outplacement services, but you're dealing with someone who understandably is, is going to be disgruntled most of the time uh, when they receive this kind of service. So juggling those emotions and keeping the, the offboard and employee on track and, and focused on their next opportunity, that's really the, the big thing from a candidate standpoint that, that we contend with. And so that emotional aspect is, is really important to us. What about the flip side? And this will be the last question, but what's been kind of the, the best part of being a part of the service? I mean, it sounds like a service that is invaluable, as you mentioned. Uh, I mean, you know, you're right. The layoffs happen all the time. And they're, they're just part of an inevitable growth curve. Um, so you must deal with, with clients that are at all sorts of, or laying off for all sorts of reasons. Do you have any kind of nice closing stories of, of individuals that you've been able to help? Yes, absolutely. So on the on the client side of things, when I've been working with the HR contact who, and for many of our clients, they refer employees to our services on, on an as needed basis. So I come to get to know these HR contacts uh, pretty extensively because there's a lot of communication over a long period of time. But it is always nice when the HR contact gets news about the success of the service that doesn't come from us. When they hear through the grapevine from one employee talking to another employee, hey, I got a new job uh, you know, within a few weeks and I really love this service that they arranged for me. And then the employee or the employer you know, breathes a sigh of relief and say, okay, I don't have to worry about that employee as much. I can focus on, on our business and, and growing it and, and I know that they're taken care of. So when the, that information doesn't come from a report that we're sending to the employer or them asking us and they hear about it through the employees talking to each other. That's really where, you know, getting some of those emails is really nice uh, on my end. Uh, but for the actual employee, it's maybe even helping them into a position that's better for their situation. Maybe they were going into the office uh, every day for the company that they used to work for. And now that they're laid off, maybe they move into uh, an organization that allows them to work remotely and maybe even pays them better. So even improves their situation. It's a job that they like more. Maybe they get better compensation, better work-life balance. And, and those kind of success stories are really nice as well, because how can you really have a lot of, of bad will when you're, you're in an objectively better situation? So of course, it's never going to be perfect. And, and it's always a very difficult topic. But when you can help employees move into that better situation, it does make everything easier and it creates a win-win situation for everyone. Great. Thanks for the insights, Ryan. Ryan Miller is a career services executive at Employment Boost, the leading boutique careers and outplacement services firm in the U.S. Employment Boost provides comprehensive outplacement services to some of the largest organizations in the country, spanning nearly all industries and sectors. At Employment Boost, Ryan manages customer success across both B2C and B2B accounts, Ryan is a graduate of Michigan State University and is a certified professional resume writer. Thanks again, Ryan.